Hello, it's me, Christine, the Estonia girl. I guess I'm not really a girl anymore, but I'll play it off. I'm the Estonia girl. Um, for just to catch you up, I had Botox on June 5th. And um, I was supposed to have appointments, like three appointments, um, last week. And um, I am learning self-care more as I'm getting into uh, the many aspects of my illnesses. It's taken me probably 10 years to figure it out, but... Um, I have general dystonia, which um, actually just, it contracts your muscles and it doesn't release them. It's like a giant char Charlie horse is the be best way to describe it. It's a movement disorder. It's in the same category as Parkinson's. Um, it's basically one part of your muscle um, is trying to relax. And then the other part of the muscle pulls the other way because it doesn't want to relax. And that's where you get the twisting and the tremoring and um, so forth. And this, the previous time I got Botox, three months prior, um, March 15th, I believe, um, I got Botox and I lost my swallow. I lost my ability to eat, drink, anything. I was down to 95 pounds. I'm hovering right around 108, 110, which is awesome. I've gained some weight. I've lost a few pounds because I have, um, I have other issues. I have interstitialis, which is a bladder condition. And I have migraines. And I have uh, the dystonia all through my body. And so, you know, I'm supposed to, I think I'm getting, I think I've had white coat syndrome for a while. Where you just start freaking out when you have to go to the doctor's office. I never used to be like that until probably this last year. Um, just... I would get panic attacks before going. It was like, what is going on? I mean, it's just, I think, you know, people think it gets easier. You know, you have to go. But when you're back to back to back to back to back to back, you know, different specialists, you have to go to this specialist, you know, but you have to go to here for this and that. And like today I have to go to the urologist and get a rescue treatment for my inner societies. And then I have to go tomorrow to get my HMP for the cystoscope that I'm having the week following that. And then, you know, two days later, I'll be back in the doctor's office again. Um, so, um, this last four years have kind of aged me. I didn't, I, I, it's starting to, uh, it's starting to take a toll. Um, I learned a lot of gratitude and thankfulness when I was in the hospital and I did lose my ability to swallow, my ability to eat. Um, I don't take a lot of things for granted that I used to. Um, my voice is still messed up and he didn't do like my neck. It, it, he was doing it conservatively this time because the last time kind of sucked really bad. And so, um, it's only been a little over a week and, you know, I was supposed to go to the doctors yesterday, but I mixed the time up. This is what happens when you have so many doctor's appointments at different places and I thought I had it all figured out but I rescheduled one appointment from last week because it was just ridiculous I couldn't do it and so I messed it up and so I ended up finally getting some food in the house because 
there was like no food in the house and I got, you know, those things accomplished. And I could have still tried to make the appointment, the other doctor's appointment, but it was like, are you pushing yourself too hard? Because when you, when you're somewhat young and you have so many chronic illnesses, one of the things is it's hard to do is to pace yourself and realize that what your body allowed you to do you know, a few weeks ago or months ago or however long, it may not let you do that anymore. And so I had to make the decision to go grocery shopping and get that done and reschedule my appointment. But now it means that I have an appointment today and then I have an appointment tomorrow. And then I have a couple days breaks. But I don't think people realize that you know that you, you look at me my hair is a mess but it always is crazy like me and they just see a you know healthy individual for the most part and they don't understand the impact that the disease has on you not only is it it, it takes toll on you emotionally mentally physically and every way it drains you it drains the people around you because, you know, you you talk about it, you can't help it, but then you're, you're not supposed to talk about it. You're supposed to just suck it up and, you know, be a warrior, but then nobody is going to understand what this disease is and, you know, dystonia is a disabling disease and I didn't do much research on it when I first was diagnosed in my early 30s because I didn't want too much information I didn't want to put limitations on myself I just wanted you know things were going smoothly but then I hit a brick wall and one of the reasons is is because I pushed myself too hard way too hard for way too long and I didn't realize by doing that with dystonia it's the worst thing you can do emotional stress mental stress anguish you know going through divorce I was exercising and I didn't realize that with dystonia you can exercise and it's good for you but a lot of times the muscles You'll be fine while you're exercising, but then later on the muscles will contract and won't let go. And so it's, um, you know, I'm on, I do Botox, I'm on a muscle relaxer, I'm on Valium, you know, I'm doing everything. I do meditation, you know, I do mindfulness, I, you know, I do a positive affirmations, um, you know, I do like everything that you possibly could do to try to make it better. But, you know, my life isn't all roses and sunshine and everything. And so it does make it more difficult when you have more stress upon you. Dystonia, dystonic patients, the worst thing is lack of sleep, overexertion, at being under stress, emotional stress especially. And so it, you know, you just have to be aware of that. And that is why I'm pushing myself a little bit today, you know. But if I would have tried to do all that yesterday, if I would have went to that doctor's appointment, I'd be flat on my butt today. Because I'm already, you know, it's like, I just want to get it done. I want to get back. Like my head hurts so bad. And my muscles are so tight in my shoulder and my neck today. And I don't know why because, but the Botox can take a while to take effect. And when you're dealing with migraines and dystonia, they are related in my case. My migraine specialist even said so. It, um, it makes it more complicated and where the dystonia is located 
I mean, it's in my legs. It's hard for me to walk. I mean, I can, but I can't walk real fast or far like I used to. Um, just like doing the dishes, anything repetitive. Um, like crocheting, I love to crochet. You know, I can't do that like I used to. You know, there is acceptance with any chronic illness, but um, it's really hard. It's hard on your self-esteem, on your self-worth, um, especially when you lose the ability to be able to work. Then you're lonely because you're not out there and you interacting with people like you would normally be if you worked and you isolate yourself like dystonia is really an isolating disease that's one of the reasons why you don't hear much about it because people hide because they tremor or they their body you know has a deformity and it really makes you want to hermit yourself and isolate yourself which in turn makes you depressed and makes the depression worse. And it just goes on and on and on. And I'm really fighting to keep myself from falling into that category. I did. I fell into that. But I want my journey to count. I want to make a difference for dystonia. I want to be the face for dystonia. In the US, there isn't a face for dystonia. There's a face for Parkinson's. There's a pay face for many different diseases and conditions. But there isn't one for dystonia. And someone has to step up and do it. And I'm not the best at it, and I know I need to edit more, and I need to do this, and I need to get more information, and what works better for some will not work for others. Physical therapy will work for some, and it won't work for others. Sometimes Botox will work wonderfully for some, and, and others, it won't do anything, and sometimes it even makes it worse. It's really... Uh, it's not a fit one all disease. It, it affects pe everyone differently, just like any other disease. So it's really hard to see a dystonic patient. They can work and they're fine. I used to be that way. I mean, I couldn't work, but I wasn't as bad. But it does, it can progress. But you can stabilize for years because there were a few years that it was stable. And so there are some people that stay stable and, you know, they're fine. Some people only have to take a medication and it, they make it through just fine. So I just wanted to come on here and say, hey, I'm thankful. It's been like a week. Um, you know, I was up the next day at a doctor's office. I went outside. I did a little walking. Um, I've been staying up more than down this time just to see if there's a difference. Because, you know, just trying to to see, you know, am I self-sabotaging myself? Am I putting more stress on myself when the dystonia injections come up? Um, this time, no. Honestly, I did not. I can say that I've done everything to get the stress out of my life, to make it easier, to let my body heal. I do believe that our body has the ability to heal. And it is a mind-spirit connection, body connection. I'm not saying that it's going to cure you, but it can help you mentally and physically endure and 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 live with the side effects of the diseases whatever disease if, if you're dealing with dystonia or whatever chronic illness and I know I grab my neck a lot and sometimes it looks like I have a hickey right here because I I play with my neck when it hurts and um 
I am having a pain bad bad pain day day. I, I really am, but I don't have a choice. You know, I've gotta go to this doctor's appointment. Should I be resting? Should I have a heating pad on? Probably. But I don't have a choice because I really need to go this other one. And I think that um, some people that look at me, especially on my Facebook, they're like, she's a hypochondriac. She's always in a doctor's office. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. I'm not going to take blame for something that I did not do. I did not make myself sick. I did not ask for this. I did not ask for migraines or endometriosis or dystonia or anxiety or depression or any of what I'm going through. And so I'm dealing with it the best way that I can. And no, I don't deal with it like I should. And a lot of times, and I don't take self-care serious enough. However, I am starting to be way more self-aware of self-care. Like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done for the day. I've done this much. That's it. And forget what I, you know, quit looking in the past and the rear mirror. Yeah. Before I could do that and I didn't have a problem. Well, guess what? We're talking about the now. What is the now? The present. And what can you do to change it? If you can't do anything to change it, you have to accept it. And I am not good at acceptance. But I'm finally beginning to say, you know what? I have to accept that there are some things that are never going to go back the way they were. My voice may never come, go back completely. But there's sign language. And there's so much te technology. And I want to give people hope. And there is not enough hope out there for dystonia. There isn't. There's not enough people out there. There's not enough support groups. Um, it's like taboo. Like Shania Twain had dystonia or has dystonia. I just found that not that long ago. Because she was embarrassed and hit. She lost her voice. Yes, she lost her voice and had to regain her voice. So the next time, you need to listen to Shania Twain, even if you hate country music. But if you, if you suffer from dystonia, it's encouraging because she did. She contracted dystonia through Lyme disease and it, it, it affected her voice. She lost her vocal cords. And so she had to rehab and do a lot of stuff. So, you know, like a couple months ago, three months ago, I was sitting here. I was 94 pounds. I'm 100, you know, 110 pounds. Did it take work? Did it take determination? Uh, did it take... You know, me making my mind up, body, mind, spirit, that I was going to get my swallow back and that I was not going to let dystonia take me down. Yes, you do have to make a conscious effort and it does start in your mind and it does make a difference. But I'm going to let you go because I'm probably going to run out of time. And But I wanted to just say hey and... I'm thankful that I'm able to eat and drink and swallow. And even though I'm going through a lot all at once, and yeah, the pain sucks, life is still good. And sometimes you have to look really hard some days to find the goodness in a day. And sometimes all you can do is breathe. And maybe some days all you can do is swallow water. But you know what? Be thankful that you can swallow that water because there's people that are unable to swallow, that are unable to turn their head. Even though it hurts, I can do it. You know, it, it, it's, I, I really want awareness to come out. I want to learn more techniques. Uh, re relaxation techniques. Um, I really think that um, 
I can get better, that this can be reversed to a certain extent. And I'm not going to give up. And I will talk to you later. Bye.